Sci-fi. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Real Life Sci-Fi with Wade and Willie. I'm Wade. I'm Willie. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Midnight Kids studio here on uh, 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 Shroud Home Video. Video. Dot com. Uh, wait, I know you're, you already you're know, watching. You already know that because you're you're on it. Uh, this is kind of a conspiracy theory show. One believer, one skeptic, one guest. Today, joining us aboard the SS RLSF. This is a spaceship, by the way. Is uh, it's first of all our good friend. I gotta read this. I'm sorry. Executive producer and supervising produce. Executive producer and supervising director of Muppet Babies. Yay! And. <laughs> Do your Kermit. Oh, I do Kermit the Frog on the show too. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and this is a scoop. We've got a we've got a uh, exclusive scoop. Director of the upcoming animated movie Night at the Museum. It's Matt Danner. Hey, what's going on, man? What, uh, uh, you know, uh, hanging in. You know, glad to be here. So uh, among people, I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah, I've directed a feature film. Nice, but it was live action. What, how do you direct an ad? Like, I can't even wrap my head around how you would do that. What do you do? How do you do it? Um, a lot of storyboards, a lot of storyboards. So just changing angles and stuff like that. Yeah. It's more, more for figuring out the story, you know, like you, you, you kind of board it out and then you time it out and you, you see how it feels. And then you, uh, you have, you have more opportunity to make changes because if you're doing a TV show, you're, you're on a, on a pretty quick turnaround. Right. Whereas with a movie, you get a little more time to kind of finesse and make sure that, you know, if a joke isn't landing right, you, you, you try some others and you, is, you know, is you there testing. a script or is it board driven? It, there's a script. Okay. Yeah. There's a few scripts. Like we'll do, we'll do a, an initial script and then we'll do a board. We'll try stuff out and then we'll do rewrites based on that storyboard. Yeah. Then do a new storyboard and then sometimes punch up. Do a punch up room. Okay. Oh yeah. Are you kidding? Me in, sure. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I need money. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. No pressure. Um, <laughs> well, congratulations! It's Thank you. Amazing. Is is uh, is Ben Stiller doing it? Uh, no, we 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 talked to him. Uh, but uh, 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 Sean Levy, uh, who you know uh, created the yeah. uh, whole franchise, he's involved uh, as a producer, and he's been fabulous. And his whole team. Uh, Wait, over Sean it. Levy created the franchise? Yeah, I mean, he, Eugene, he, is that Eugene Levy's kid? No, 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 no. Uh, he, you know, he's he just directed Free Guy with uh, Ryan Reynolds, and oh, okay. Yeah, he's he's done a lot of movies. Yeah, well, that free guy uh, actually, I wrote that first. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I what was. was, what was there are no new it. ideas. That's what it is. Right? Mine was called uh, Invisible Wall, and it was about an NPC who comes to life in like a Skyrim sort of world. Oh wow! And uh, but he finds this invisible wall. You know how in video games there's invisible walls that you can't. Yeah. So he like breaks into that and like. It was going to be, you know, it was going to be really great. <laughs> <laughs> but then they got swooped out from under you. Well, this is years ago. The, some producer rewrote my script and they like stole a bunch of Simpsons jokes. And I was like, fuck you. And I, uh, I I'm walked. sorry. I fucking walked, dude. But it, was a, it, was a, it was a series for like Disney or something. All right. Like a uh, member maker. Maker Studios. Yeah. yeah. Remember when Disney bought maker? Yeah, I was I was working at Interactive at the time, you know, yeah. on a on a sort of a beta of Disney Plus. Yeah, so it was it was one of those. It was one okay. of those. It's so, crazy. Yeah. Well, but congrats to all your success. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Boy, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, but no, it's great. It's 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 been it's been fabulous. You know, uh, it's it's through 20th Century, who uh, you know, who you, I guess used to be Fox. You know, and they do like Bob's Burgers and Simpsons yeah. and all that. And then so, but it's the feature division, uh, and they're fabulous. They're great to work with, and we will hopefully have a movie out sometime later this year. All so. right. <laughs> Uh, how about this? Uh, hi, I'm H- H- Harry Troop. Wait, which Truman was Williams? Robin Williams? No, he was Roosevelt. Oh, Roosevelt. Uh, Roosevelt. Uh. Oh, oh, hello. I'm on my horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just put that in your back. You got it. No, no, no. <laughs> casting comes It's around. like I could just see it. It's like the glasses <laughs> and the mustache just formed. Close your eyes. It was beautiful. And imagine <laughs> an easily drawn background. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, so we do something here called the Wow Scale. It stands for Waiter Willie. Yeah. It's a five. Wow yeah. scale. It's a five question uh, quiz. At the end, I'll grade you. Don't worry about your score. But if you're more of a five, you're more of a Willie. If you're more of a zero, you're more of a Wade. Are you ready to be Wade on the Wow Scale? Yes. You know, I think I might have done this before, but I think since the world went to hell, I think my 
I think my score might have changed a little bit. Yeah, and I don't. I I never remember anybody's score. So yeah, <laughs> me neither. I don't really remember that. I write them down in this. But yeah, I do. Look again. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. All right. First question, three parter. Do you believe in aliens? If so, have they visited Earth? If so, have they visited Earth in the last three hundred years? Uh, yeah. Yes, to all three of those. All right. Follow up. What 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 does an alien look like? Oh, who knows? Uh, you know. I feel like we've been kind of led to believe they look like the kind of the gray aliens with the big yeah, heads yeah, and the like eyes. But I, I kind of feel like if you follow like Carl Sagan or anything, like aliens probably wouldn't look humanoid at all. So I kind of feel like they're more along the lines of whatever. Uh, what was that movie with, um, you know, with the arrival? Uh, with yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those squid, with, yeah, squid, the squid guys. Yeah, like something like that. I feel like yeah, that was be. a cool abstract. It was neat. Yeah. Good storytelling, too. Very, very cyclical. That was yeah. the whole point is that it was cyclical. <laughs> How did you get my number? Yeah. <laughs> well, you told me 10 years from now. It was um, cool. It was just a real eye roll. Also. Wait, yeah. they do that? I thought that was the Matthew McConaughey one where he pushes the book off the shelf. That, that was Interstellar. Was Interstellar yeah. where, where the, the, basically the, the, the fractal of the universe allowed him to communicate through the gravity waves. Yeah. He like entered the fourth dimension, but, uh, so what is this simple? time travel thing with Arrival? I don't remember that. Uh, well, yeah. It kind of happened over uh, Montage. Right. Where you kind of learn that like they communicate with time s- cyclically and they, yeah. and they say that. And so eventually she... Oh, I do remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they, right, like right, the aliens yeah. experienced all time all at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas we see it as a sequence of events. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts Whatever. on ghosts? What? Ghosts. Uh, well, again, I, I think that, I think that a version of ghosts exist, but I don't think it's, uh, uh, ghosts that have like conscious souls or anything. If anything, they're just sort of like echoes of the past. Like residual energy that just, yeah, like a recording, like, you know, something always happened in the house the same way over and over again. And maybe, maybe you you catch a glimpse of that. My ghost is just me playing video games, (laughs) but like (laughs) looking really sharp when there's a noise. (laughs) <laughs> uh bigfoot i don't know i i would i would have loved to have said yes but i i don't think so unfortunately Fair enough. sorry bigfoot i know there's a big stand yeah there. He's, you know what but again if you had asked me if you had asked me like two or three years ago i probably would have said yes but now i i don't know it's it just doesn't feel like he makes sense you know get some drones out there yeah <laughs> Like what? Is, what's the point? You know, like I guess they're pretty loud. Though. Yeah, I know. Like anybody would hide and from then that. They, then they disappear. I mean, that's the thing. Like, are they advanced? Are they not? It's like I don't know. There's too many questions. Too many questions. Yeah. All right. Uh, psychics. Uh, I don't think so anymore. I honestly, again, I would have said yes, but like, I feel like there's having having done you know mentalism and magic. It's very easy to read people. You do magic. I mean, no, not really. I mean, a little bit, you know, but nothing, nothing crazy. Can you, but, do, can you do a magic trick? Yeah, I can like in my thumb. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't have any, I don't have my, my props on me, unfortunately. You know? I do the big, the big prop stuff with boxes and feathers and doves and stuff. Uh, but no, uh, but I don't think so. I think, I think that it's a very, I think people are very intuitive and sometimes they just have a knack for it. Yeah. But I think it's definitely a skill having seen how mentalism works. I, I have to say no on the psychics, unfortunately. All right, last question. Are you superstitious? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let me go over this. Uh, you are, I mean, you're like a three. We'll put you right in the middle. All right. I'll take it. You happy? Yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect balance. Yeah. So I feel good. A, I feel close great, to both of you now. We're going to have a great discussion. Great about, discussion. Uh, Willie, hit us with the topic. Tonight on Real Life Sci-Fi, Klaus Dona of Vienna, Austria, one of the world's leading experts on out-of-place artifacts um, that mainstream academia rejects. He has a traveling exhibit pointing out things that are pretty crazy. Let's get into all the things that he is into tonight on Real Life Sci-Fi. I have no idea. What I know. I kind of lost my uh, yeah. <laughs> train. I, I, he, I don't know which camera to look at either. It's this one, right? This is yeah. Where, well, where do we do our gym ticks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot to say, 
patreon.com slash real life sci-fi we got two bonus episodes a week so you know i'll do i'll do a quick overview of what he's into some of the things that he has he is a guy who talks about now he he doesn't have these in his possession he's kind of like showing trying to show people some of the things that he thinks are part of an ancient history that is not accepted by regular, including elongated skulls, giants. Uh, uh, he, he's been, he recently, he showed some statues they found in South America, I believe that look like great aliens um, underground uh, labyrinths and, and, and tunnels and stuff under pyramids and whatnot. And um, so he he's just kind of a guy trying to he I, I forget what he works for, but he kind of has some funding and he goes around the world and tries to find support for an alternate history that is not accepted. Yeah, he's he's an academic, you know. Uh, you know, he was I think he came from the art world. Oh, you yeah, know yeah. about you know about this. Guy. I'm a little familiar with him. Yeah, he's tough to he's I mean I mean uh, believe it or not, like you actually have more information than I've ever heard of the guy ever. But I've seen his I've seen his videos on YouTube before. Yeah, and he is he alive? He's alive now. I I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's like in his like, he's 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 getting up there. I don't know, seventies or eighties or something. Yeah. yeah. Is he hot? One might one might agree with the, the answer. Yes, he's got he's got a pretty uh, a pretty sexy accent. <laughs> oh, where's he? From? He's got a, he's from Austria. Yeah, yeah, so he's got uh, he kind of talks he like uh, he's like a kind of a soft Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. There's a mystery yeah. who who built the Great Pyramid. Yeah, that's, or that's what good. the the methods of construction <laughs> were of the Sphinx. I love I love Austrian yeah. German. Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean here here are here are some of the statements that he says are accepted by mainstream academia that he disagrees with. The uh, who there is no mystery of who built the Great Pyramid or what the methods of construction were of the Sphinx. Um, and, oh, oh, and and that the Sphinx shows no signs of water damage. He disagrees with that. I do too. Uh, he one statement out there is. There were no humans in the Americas before 20,000 BC. He feels like he has proof for that. The first civilization dates back no further than 6,000 BC. Again, these are statements that uh, regular academia agrees with. There are no documented anomalous, anomalous, unexplained enigmatic data to take into account. Everything we see is what we get. And then... uh, Lastly, there are no lost or unaccounted for civilizations. So he, from all the stuff that information that he's gathering, is trying to turn these statements on their head. Right. Yeah. It's like it's the art of out of place artifact or turvy artifact. Where it's yeah. Like, there's a there's a kind of this called oop oop parts out of parts, place. Yeah. Art oop oop art artifacts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. But I. But uh, you know. And 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 wait. I feel like this is something you might be into because. Uh, it's all based on actual artifacts that they found that just don't fit the narrative mm-hmm. of human history. You this know? bowl doesn't belong to the Incas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, so like, I mean, I mean, like one of the biggest things in the conspiracy realm that is like people don't know if it's a story or not is supposedly there were some uh, uh, documents that were... Um, declassified that showed that the Smithsonian uh, in the early 1900s were like hiding evidence of giants because it didn't fit any, any of their, yeah, the their, narrative. their history. Yeah. Narrative. This is early 1900s. This is around before and around world war one. Yeah. Even though there's stories about giants in every like, you know, uh, like ancient text, Yeah, you know, and then they found bones and stuff, didn't they? And like, well, you that's know, the thing. It, giant like chairs it, and art that depicts larger people. And if you find giant bones, my perspective is, and and I'm skewed by the conspiracy world, but um, if you find giant bones somewhere, as an academia, you can't. It, it's hard to just put this out there because you don't want to be the one that says giants are real. But you know, it's all myth. It's like, well. There are giants 
today that uh, you know where it's just like random diseases or or yeah, it's you like know, the, the gland, the the pituitary yeah, gland. Yeah. And so like yeah. you don't want to come out and be like, yes, there was a race of giants when there's like only a few. So yeah, those when they find those things, they kind of put them aside until they find more evidence or something else to tell about. Right. And well, I mean, that makes sense to me, but I, 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 so it's not like they're, to me, it's not like they're hiding it. It's just like, you don't want to be the person trying to, that's going to be responsible for people saying, look, he found giants. Yeah. They're real. <laughs> well, that's, and, but, it, but I think it's also having to take the leap of going against what everyone's already agreed upon in the science world. Like if you look at um, like string theory, for instance, if you talk to somebody like 20 years ago about it, they were kind of looked at as a joke, you know, but yeah. now it's actually very um, accepted in the science community. And not that I know anything about science so 20 but, years ago, they would laugh out loud. Right. Yeah. But nowadays they're like, no, actually there might be some validity to this because they're exploring it more and they're trying to, you know, retest things. But the, but the difference between that and this is that this is history, you know, and this is something where it's like people have painstakingly created a timeline and then suddenly they find like a wristwatch in like, you know, in, in ancient that's, stone that's and they're that, like, well, yeah. well, wait a minute, you know, and that, that one, I don't know if that one's real, but like, what this is a real thing. Someone yeah. found a wrist. Watch. Yeah, like a wristwatch, like in stone, and it's like a, it's like a, like an eighties looking wristwatch, like you know, and stuff and like that, like hammers, tools, like people are finding stuff way lower than it should exist. And the, um, the watch is particularly weird because you know a lot of people are like, oh, see, time travel's real, but uh, uh how, honestly, how did it get in that stone? It's well, uh, an intern fucked up, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Which could, so, which yeah. totally could. Isn't this guy the the easiest explanation is the oh he dropped his watch and then they found it's like wait a minute <laughs> I have to go back and look <laughs> yeah I don't don't publish this one yeah <laughs> but um wait so there's pictures of it yeah it's like a Timex it's yeah it's sort of like a like a like yeah it looks like I a, think that the brand is something that doesn't exist so it's kind of weird it, it wait it has a brand like they could read the brand it, on yeah it? there's like there's like numbers on it and everything and yeah. Very strange, but like, so here's the thing though. So, so, so this is where, you know, again, I, I, I dare say this, this is, this starts getting into the ancient aliens sort of, uh, genre, Yeah. but that's what I dug about hearing Klaus talk is that he doesn't ever speculate like that. All he does is go, look, here's what we found. There's no way that human beings could have understood this by the time that this was discovered, like in, within the, within the, 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 the strata or whatever. It, it is really, it is really cool to have him not speculate because yeah. that, that's the biggest problem with all of a sudden. Well, you got the hair guy, right? The, yeah. You know, those aliens and, you know, but he's saying people have been around for longer. That's his yeah. thing. Yeah. And in, the, in, in, in the America specifically, that was advanced. because the, 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 the official story right now is people didn't come to America until the land bridge happened. And so like that's, that paints a specific time when they traveled over here and, and like he's found evidence of people here before then. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like what happens when they say that they all came over in Landbridge and you find people. It's like, well, we can't talk about that because we don't have enough evidence to talk about it anyways, right. but it, it changes the narrative of what everybody accepts. Yeah. So no one's going to just jump on board. Yeah. These scientists are a little precious, man. I mean, like, <laughs> It wouldn't change my life at all if they were like, oh, we fucked up. Yeah, people are older. I'd be like, right. all right, cool. Yeah. And what's funny, like when you when you see people, people are out there trying to negate anybody that's off the beaten path anyways. And so like I read a lot of articles of people knocking and I was like, he has no proof. He just says that he found this thing. And it's like, well, in a in a that's in a lecture, you're not you're not going to spend the time like this is where we got the picture and yeah. uh, this is the side <laughs> like it would be three hours long instead of one yeah but but um but i feel like he like the, he does a certain amount of of at least auth authenticity uh you know verification right yeah, do you know yeah. about this guy previously or willie told you we're going to talk about this too no no i i i like i i'm just from like i i, I knew about this guy previously that's great why yeah. I don't know, because you know, you just sometimes watch stuff on YouTube and you kind of go down rabbit holes. Like, conspiracy theories and stuff in general. Well, I'll tell you, I used to be. Yeah. Until now, because conspiracy theories aren't funny anymore. Well, now they're funny. <laughs> I know. And it, That's and what I sucks. mean. Like it used to be fun, you know, believing yeah. like, ah, oh, you know, reading something like, oh, you know, reptile people and stuff. And now I'm right. sort of like, oh God, reptile people. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it used to be funny to me, and now it's not funny. But at least this stuff feels like it's it's 
there's at least one foot in some sort of historical science, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, Carl Sagan, you know, he did, he did this whole thing on, on how humans can affect evolution just by existing like those, um, those samurai crabs, you know, and oh, yeah, yeah. that like evolved to have like basically almost faces on their shells because those are the ones that always got thrown back because they thought that, oh, they held this, the soul of a Good fallen luck. soldier. Bad, yeah, luck, yeah. To Bad luck to kill it. So they throw it back. And then over the course of like 200 years, suddenly these things are coming out of the water. They look like kabuki masks. I mean, they look yeah. uh-huh. crazy right. good, you know? And so if that can happen in that short amount of time, I feel like, you know, think that means things can change really quickly. And that's where the out of place artifacts things if, at first got my attention because of how they, they they might make sense, but they don't because there's something missing, you know, and that's why. Yeah. Know, the, like the, one example he has is in, in this one museum, they've got these giant axes, axe heads made out of stone. And, and where is this at? Uh, I, I didn't actually write that down. Oh. I, but, <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> it's in a museum. Yeah. It's in a mu- gonna it belongs it? in a museum. Are you going to use it for your movie? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay, so yeah. so <laughs> under the description, it says ceremonial acts. Right. And, and he, he just starts talking about how, well, you know, if you're going to make one giant ceremonial axe, I get it. But they have hundreds of them. So so it makes him go like, man, if you if you built the put the wood on this. Axe, how big are we talking? Uh, he says it's five times bigger than a regular axe. So, you know, I, I can't do five like a battle times. axe, like because those are pretty big. You know, like a two-handed axe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're like, like a twenty-handed axe. And so he's just going like, well, right. This can't be a ceremonial axe because <laughs> well, you wouldn't 25. make hundreds <laughs> of them. Yeah, why? Why make hundreds? So, of them? so he's going like, well, you know, this just leans towards the fact that maybe the people were bigger here. There could be because they were they they have found. They found giant giant bones all over the world. I don't know how many. I don't know. There's not a, there's not a, a, enough for a lot of people to say, "Yep, this is what you're saying is true." But no one everyone's not going to be like, "Hey, we found these." Yeah. There's a lot of fake pictures because, too though. When when yeah, there's a lot of fake pictures. Yeah. But the thing is if you're excavating something and you find something, you, you don't publish what you found until you've made an assessment of everything there. So it yeah. could take 20 to 30 years to be like, okay, this, this is what we found in here. Sure. Because you're going to lay you, it all I out. The, it I bet the out. giants were stupid. Yeah. <laughs> because how else would we eradicate them? They must have been stupid. I'd let's say, let's say the giants existed and they've got these giant axes and stuff, which means they're not friendly. So what? We invented like arrows, and we were like, "Fuck." Well, I mean, Davy and Goliath, right? That's like a that's a biblical story yeah, about, hit him, and supposedly that, giant. that might have been a, a a cyclops, and he hit him in the eye with a rock, and that's what did it. Yeah. Wait, do you believe in cyclopses too? No, mm, I don't either. Okay, they're elephant skulls, I think. Have you seen the cyclops skull? No. It's an. Why would it be an elephant? Well, because oh, the, they, they, the trunk hole looks yeah, like yeah, a giant yeah. eyeball. Got it. And it's got so the same way that dragons came about because they found dinosaur, dinosaur bones. bones. Yeah. Although, but Trek, I mean, dragons sort of, I mean, kimono dragons exist, but they're just called dragons, but they look like dinosaurs, I guess. But they're so just the same things, right? They're huge, but yeah. Yeah. Well, but we're not talking about flying, fire breathing. No, but di- dinosaurs flew, right? Oh, not, not fire. Well, I mean, but, but, um, Pterodactyls. Uh, uh, but kimono, kimono dragons have acidic mostly. spit. Like, really? Yeah, they can like they have like acidic like their their saliva can like break down you know material. Did like you see acid. the video of that one that like climbed up the convenience store into the <laughs> into the uh, I ceiling? Think, I don't think that was a kimono dragon. It wasn't. <laughs> no, uh, I thought it was. I think it's like a monitor or something. It's like the, the same family maybe, but those things are like twelve feet long or whatever. Like they're gigantic. I thought they were friendly, but they'll yeah. spit at you. <laughs> No, they're not. They'll they're not. You. No, they'll kill oh, you. But no, shit. they'll bite you, and then like you'll. They basically will poison you. They're, they're oh, they don't spit, but when they bite you, it poisons. it's acidic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their teeth has got so much bacteria that it will kill you. Yeah, it'll just infect you. Um, but you know those. What is exist. what? How do you spit? Like how? What? How do you? How does one spit? What is it? Lung function? Why that, can't dogs spit? I think it's the shape of your mouth, right? They, is that what it is? They, there's yeah, a, yeah. let's see, there's a lizard that shoots blood out, right? Yeah. 
Well, the King Cobra fires it out of his fangs, right? Yeah. And then there is you know. an animal that actually does shoot acid out. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, bu- a beetle. It's a bug, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a beetle or something. Yeah. Weird beetle. And it's acid. Hey, this is science, man. This is real. <laughs> you should love this. World, man. This sucks. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm like, that's why, like, as much as I would like to visit, like, Australia, I'm like, that is oh, the yeah. island of monsters. They have, like, the five deadliest creatures on the you planet. You got a spider this big? Yeah. Funnel spider. I've, I've, I've tangled with a funnel spider. What do you mean? I went to Australia and, like, there was one in my friend's backyard and we had to, like, take care of it. What'd you do? I dropped a brick on it. Yeah, right. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. I feel so bad. But, no, that, yeah, they're, they're aggressive. Yeah. They're like they're black and real oily looking. And, how know. big how big? Like a football? No. Something like that. This I, one was that big. Like a, a like a tarantula. Animal. Like a tarantula. Like a tarantula. But there's big ones though. Yeah, they get bigger. This one was like, I don't know. Spread. This was a, this was in the city. So it was, you know, it wasn't like or like not the city, the suburbs, but it was inland enough where, you know. I'm wondering if there's a point, because I don't like spiders, but I'm wondering if there's a point where it would get so big that I would be okay with it. Because I think part of the reason I don't like spiders is because they're small. Yeah, you know, like it could can crawl like, up your neck. You feel that anywhere. sensation more yeah. than like like kicking it out of your so way. Like, you want to be like kitty size so you can like put it on your lap and pet it. Yeah. 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 I don't like the idea of something that has better hair than me. Like tarantulas, the hair on them is so thick that like they could have a better goatee than I could ever have. You know, it's like a pelt. And I'm just like, it, to me, it, what do you call that word? Emasculates me? Is that the word? <laughs> Demasculates. Demasculates. No, no, I think it's emasculate. Like, it's like fuck, man. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, tarantulas, I, man. When yeah. I was a kid, I, I, I was growing up knowing that a man has hair on his chest and facial hair. And I never had either one of those. I'm with you. Hey, well, you know, we're mustachioed bros. Yeah. That's it. This is all I can do. Me too. If and I I'm try like, anything I'm else. keeping it forever. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I look like a sick cat if I try anything else. Like you got a nice beard. Like I can't do it. Thank you. They just come out like weird whiskers, and yeah. I look like one of those. You know, it looks hairless. To me, cats. it looks like dirt. Yeah, or yeah, or coffee grounds. Every time I've tried to grow anything more than a mustache, people always ask me if I'm feeling okay. <laughs> if that's any indication of not growing facial hair, they're like, "Are you all right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just growing a goatee." But you're not, like, you know, oh. you're not taking care of yourself. Yeah. So I so I just got this. I got my lip hair, and I groom it. It's like it was this or a bonsai tree, and I figured. So you do it like me. You trim above the lip. It's very, it's yeah. very like old school director or French, you know. Or, yeah. Wait, yeah. Why? I, why do you do that? Because so it, that it doesn't be, get in your mouth. Mostly for me, because it. I oh above the lip, above the lip. Yeah. Oh oh. But like, if, I, if it grows out, it just doesn't look like it's full. It looks like it looks like somebody with thin hair like covering up their spot to me, on my head. Like you can still see my lip through my mustache. Like just trim that shit. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to get into the, like the twirling phase, you know? So I just, I just do like the thing where I smile and then you just kind of cut across the <laughs> smile line. And then you do the, it's like, it's like, and the, it's all in your teeth. Yeah, it's like, like hey. the facial version of putting lipstick on. <laughs> you have to make every like weird expression you would make and then just trim the outliers, you know, you know, it was this or a bonsai tree, like I'm saying. I needed a COVID uh, a, a oh, hobby, funny. and I didn't want to kill a tree. Mustache? Yeah, well, I I figured it would be easier to kill my face than a than a than a poor little bonsai tree. So, did you get into oils, mustache? No, oils? no, no, no. I'm not. I haven't gotten into that. I got a trimmer though. Um, <laughs> very exciting. There's stuff. like there's a lot of beard products that are fun. Yeah. Do you have some? I do. Yeah. I, t- I stopped using them during the pandemic because yeah. I was like, who gives a shit? Yeah, but you've, you're very, you're very kept. Your beard is, seems, looks very kept. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Um, no one's calling the cops here. Uh, you don't look like a burglar. You look like yeah, a gentleman. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you know that Satanist? Uh, is it An- 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 Anton LaVey? Anton LaVey. Uh, there was a part of his book, you guys are talking about body hair. And, <laughs> and he, you could tell that he was very, very self-conscious about his, his manliness because he can't he, grow the hair here either. Well, he did a whole thing about how like he doesn't, the chest hair isn't manly because gorillas don't have chest hair. Whoa. I that remember guy, hearing about that, that guy yeah. is so self-conscious. Well, apes man. don't have armpit hair either. Right. They have hair in all the opposite spots. Yeah. Yeah. Which means we're very you're wrong. Yeah. yeah. Because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is manly to have no, chest No, no, I did research. Yeah. I don't have any chest hair. I'm not saying I mean, I do, you're but not again, a man like if you don't have chest hair. I'm whiskers. saying it's definitively a manly trait. There's no... Yeah. So this guy, I mean, I just... I hate how self-conscious he... <sighs> do you have chest hair, Wade? A little. Yeah. 
Again, you got the beard, so I'm I'm jealous of that. It's uh, I'd love to be able to. The only reason I have the beard is because I'm I got a double chin and I'm overweight, (laughs) and it's like don't say that my face a little. Okay, all right. When I shave my neck, I have to, I have to like because otherwise it's just flabby. Right. Well, I have no upper lip, which is why this helps. Because I remember I grew it for a joke. Because uh, I thought, oh, I'll have a mustache. Won't that be funny? And then everyone was like, you look good. You look better. And I was like, oh, oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> sure. So then it stuck. Even my wife was like, yeah, it looks good. I was like, okay. Yeah. When you direct your movie, are you gonna are you gonna get those those big director pants? And yeah, like, beret uh, and stuff. I yeah. feel like this. You should. That would I, be I, funny. I, I feel like I'm in the Ed Wood phase of my life, look wise. So like, I'll, I'll go all in. I'll do ascots. You, and, you've got you know, the, the the megaphone. And you're telling to yeah. one guy who's like drawing. Yeah. Get a move on it. Come on. <laughs> I said action, action. Go, go, go. We don't got a permit. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about these uh these structures that they found in in the Mediterranean. Um is this like Atlanta I stuff? Or? I can't read my notes. Sa- Sa- Sander Sanderia. I don't know. Anyways, the, in this area they found these ancient uh megalithic structures. And they call they have described them as defense towers. Yeah, and so so Is they're like in the sea. Uh, no, that just scattered all over the 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 countryside. They have it looks like a a tower with a little tiny uh, building attached to it, a room room. But they're pretty big. Like they, I feel like they're probably like thirty to fifty feet tall. Okay, made out of stone. And um, um so so they've they've said that. They don't know who built them. They don't know how old they are, but they say, oh, these are defense towers. Hmm. And so his argument is, this is just a specific thing. It's just like, look. Defense for what? These aren't defense towers because there's hills everywhere and none of them are built on a hill. Right. And there's only one entrance. So if if you had fire, you could just smoke out the person uh, in there. Like the, he, there's only one way for him to get out. Sure. And um, um, they there are a couple like. Does he think they're chairs? <laughs> just giant, just giant chairs. <laughs> well, he there are a couple holes um that on the solstices the sun comes through and and there is like a shape of a bullhead uh, illuminated on the wall. Oh. And so but he he's just going like look, these aren't defense towers and they're astronomically aligned because they on the solstices light come through comes through. And so it's it's weird too because if these things were built 6,000 years ago, these wouldn't have aligned with the solstices now because we've moved enough to where oh. alignments from 6,000 years ago wouldn't be aligned anymore. Yeah. So, and so he ca- he's countering his own. Theory. No, he's saying that this might have been built so long ago that it was that they're even way older than you can fathom. Like stone it's hard for stone to like go away. Right. And so, you know, is, is the theory that it, it's been so long that it's sort of gone back to what it was. Yeah. yeah. Like as if it's like cyclically, they, they okay. call that the procession of the equinox oh. where our, or our, nor- we're aimed at this North store, a star, and it takes 25,000 years. The earth's wobble to get back pointed to the same spot. North star. Okay. So, um, you know, and, and he doesn't speculate that these were from then, but he's like, Hey, they line up now. Yeah. And they didn't, and through recorded history, they couldn't have been built to line up now. Is this Klaus again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I mean. And But he didn't speculate, yeah. right? He just says it's weird. And that's, like, that's, it's that's weird, nice, right? And, and here's an extra little thing about it. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I can buy that. That makes sense. Yeah. But this is like, <laughs> this is classic. Like, oh, I'm not speculating, but I'm highly... Like but it's aliens <laughs> for speculation. Like I'm giving you all of the things that you need to speculate yourself. Right. I don't want to take the credit of uh, getting in trouble. That's so funny. But what is this point? Like, what's the what's the deal? Well, so so I mean, I, I'll go into some more little little tidbits here and there. But ultimately, what he is kind of leaning towards is that if there was a he 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 speculates that there he doesn't know if it's a worldwide civilization or if the world was communicating with each other but a lot of the ancient megalithic sites that could have been built a lot earlier um kind of match up with with having 
being connected to the world hmm. through either how they build pyramids or same civilization or just the communication. And that, uh, uh, so like, like one of the things that he's getting into recently is um, they have some new scanning technology where you can scan underground. Um, and there are the sun and moon, moon pyramids of Teotihuacan. There are tunnel systems and uh, chambers underneath them. And one of them like 170 meters down, which is what, like, three, four, 500 feet. I, I don't know. That. Uh, there's a room that has four entrances and there are bones inside of it. And um, so, so for what it takes to excavate underground tunnels and pyramids, first off too much money. Second off, like if you've ever seen any, like the excavation of a pyramid, it really is people, too many people walking with buckets of sand, just like for years. Yeah because they don't have too much uh, equipment out there. and Well, plus they have to be careful because they don't want to destroy. If yeah. you take a bulldozer you do it down delicately. there, you got to yeah. break everything. Yeah. And so, so mm. he found through the scanning technology around Easter Island under the water, they found this like 4,000 tall like tower that is made out of metal. And then the surrounding flat ground around it has like a concrete mixture to it. So, so, uh, um, hmm. what he's getting into now is scanning underground things, and and he's trying to get funding to to excavate. Wait, but is that the way the is that the way the Earth works? That there's just more dirt. All yeah, the that's, time? it's like levels. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, so and that's why they got to dig down to find stuff. So, like, all our skyscrapers are going to just be encased in dirt at some point in in six thousand years let's say, let's say i mean it's arbitrary but six thousand years from now Where's like this dirt coming from Space. it's just uh uh no they start it? stardust yeah the the earth gains weight every day doesn't it from like i mean i know that i have stardust to dust and... constantly which i hate yeah. <laughs> so i just don't do it but uh right. <laughs> but the wind's changing the water level's changing so so like well going back to these tower these towers that they say are defense towers they found a couple underwater and so they're like, oh, the, th these match these ones on ground. And this water has been here for way too long. Did so they, he ever say, I forget, did he ever say what he thinks these towers are if they're not defense towers? Oh, not specifically, but just that they he were. he refuses to uh, theorize. Well, but, but he says that they're, they're astronomically aligned. So that the significance of the solstice is set makes him say, look, this is from a civilization that understood these things. So Right. So they're at least smart and and could well. Build it's like things. the Stonehenge thing, right? Where it's like, what is it? But like some people say, it's a it's a calendar, or it's a you know, it's whatever it is. We don't know, but like it has uh, a knowledge base that far exceeds what they would have known at the time. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah. would you have to be smart to go like, oh, look, the light is from here. I'll build a thing. Uh, well, so the weird or thing, is, or is it is it based on stars? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. all like. Oh, so it's not just the way the sun is shining. It's also like stars. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the placement of where the planet is in the universe, you know, in comparison so, to the sun. So, yeah. So June 21st so is when... So they're paying attention to the stars. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're smart. <laughs> <laughs> they're just looking up and going like, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. They oh, just yeah. happen to build it on the day. It's like, oh, it looks like, like a crab. Let's line this up here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the hole's coming through. It's like, oh, it doesn't line up. Wait till next year. Do it Wait again. Wait till next year. Yeah. Start over. Um, I mean, from what I gather from it, what it basically says is like, like for, for instance, you know, there's always some, some historical thing that pops up that people go, wait a minute, we didn't even consider this. Like, you know, they found that Island of hobbits, you know, the hobbit skeletons. Did you hear about this? It was basically like this, this, this Island. And I forgot where it was, but they were, uh, the Island somehow was ended up getting separated from the mainland. And so, so this, you know, these people evolved very, to be ti really tiny. And then they, they've recently found not recently, but like, I don't know, 10 years ago found their bones and stuff. And it's like, and then, and then the thought of like, well, Hey, and this goes to your giant comment, mm -hmm. which is if they had been part more part of society, they might've bred into it. And then everyone would have averaged out, you know, right. which the same could have happened for giants, you know, like, because if, the, if, if there were giants and they were strong warriors, maybe they would have, you know, ended up becoming heroes of their village and then making families within the village. You never know. It depends know. on the, penis size because <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> sure yeah you know maybe well, it's too big and maybe yeah and then 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 then, it, then they just all died off you know 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they couldn't fuck, dude. That's that's what's what history says. <laughs> what does Klaus Donna say about that? <laughs> These we are we are those giants could not mate. Yeah, <laughs> they were um, very horny, but but, but isn't is no the theory one would ju- fuck them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Well, there's one thing I wanted Sorry, to talk about tonight. Here. Just... No, no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, I'll be thinking about that for months now. Uh, no, but I, but for for me, what I take from it is like is like there is a a point where maybe society existed before the society that we've you know been diligently recording yeah. of recent, and maybe it got lost, and then now we're finding stuff that alludes to that, and whatever that is, that's the question mark. But like for instance, you know. If the ocean le- the ocean uh, level was much lower, there'd be much more connections between islands, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like the Bering Strait or whatever. So, you know, humans could have ac- absolutely come over to, you know, the Americas during the Ice Age, right? And that's all he's saying is like there's there's proof that there, you know, people came or no, he's saying people came even earlier than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it makes but it, but I feel like if it makes sense in one way, it makes sense in another way. I don't know. I, that's just my two cents but yeah yeah i mean like like if you're working in 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 the realm of history now you you start with what the accepted history is yeah and and so like everything that you theorize comes from that framework and you you can't really come up with stuff outside of that because then no one's going to listen to you is it right? Cla- klaus 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 dona Dona D O N A. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just like hitting up the Discord to see if they have questions. And um, oh, cool. um so like one of the things that he found is a, a Mount Kailas in Tibet. He thinks is actually uh it's a mountain, but he thinks it's actually a pyramid. Hmm. They've scanned it and they found um um tunnels and stuff underneath it, and and they would like to you know do more research into that. And hmm. and specifically that alignment of that mountain is uh you know, 6,666 kilometers from the North Pole. And and from... The devil, six man. Six, yeah. uh, it's four sixes. But oh, also, okay. One for the, nor- the North Pole is 6,666 six, kilometers six from edge. the Great Pyramid. Oh, I see. So it's like sort of... So he's saying like, he's trying to say that like some of these megalithic ancient structures may have been uh, uh, designed where they were built. Hmm. So, so like also, so from Mount Kai, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Kailos, 6,666 kilometers away from that is Stonehenge. And hmm. then from that, Bermuda Triangle. And then from that, uh, uh, Easter Island. Well, didn't they find one in um, the Grand Canyon too? Like a pyramid in the Grand well, Canyon? I, I like think that, 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 that there could, that, that, the Grand Canyon area might be ancient pyramids that like have weathered in such a way. They just look like mountains, but like, Oh, interesting. Cause they did find like weird, like, well, the peaks like have, caves and stuff, right? Yeah. That, well, that, that, that's and a story that a lot of, and... a lot of people easily don't believe, but yeah, that, that there's a Smithsonian. The story is there's a Smithsonian guy who was doing, looking around in, in the Grand Canyon and he found, uh, a bunch of Egyptian artifacts out of place in a tunnel. Oh. And that might've been part of that pyramid system. And all the mountains in that area have Egyptian names, which is really strange. Yeah. All the peaks, but they were already named that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean already? Like who named them? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, know. that was, the, those are the names passed down through history. Yeah. Right? We've adopted. You ever played a telephone game? Yeah. We never, we never would have been able to keep those names. What's a telephone? <laughs> you mean a cell phone? Uh, Willie, really, we've got to, we've got to do an app. Yeah, I. Well, that's the thing is, I didn't. Do get we a, not have the I, I, copy? I, 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 I don't know. I'm not ready for it. So we'll, we'll, we'll give you four, four weeks, not counting this one. Oh, they get four weeks. It's because it's for the month. Okay. So yeah, sorry, bud. We got a Timothy Pizza ad coming up in the next four weeks. I didn't uh, prepare properly. Uh, okay. Sorry to derail the conversation. <laughs> no, it's fine. Now I'm, I'm interested. Um, so, okay. Get back to it. What's the next thing? Well, um, um, so... Uh, I'm bored. <laughs> you're like, come on. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 
Well, well, let me ask you guys something like, like what? So like uh, when it comes to a lot of these old megalithic structures, um, he points out, and I've seen this pointed out before that the way that they construct them is, is, is it's, it's weird to us because it's not brick, 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 like even the great pyramid, each brick specifically fits in that spot and it, and it has its own shape where it's just like, like, like a puzzle, mm. except you know how like puzzles have got the same repeated pieces over and over. Every piece is completely unique. Right. So that all of the major stones of the pyramid and then of most of the pyramids around the world, whatever technology they use to cut the stones is weird because not only is it like smooth surface, but weird, not a perfect cube or anything. It only fits right there. Right. And so like, to me, there's a technology loss, whether it be liquefaction or. Yeah. Emotion. Listen, I mean, maybe, but I would, but there's also like people who make art just based on like the, the shape of the stone. Right. And so they'll like find the stone that like kind of fits perfectly. And so it would be super time consuming. And, but maybe that's what they were doing. They, well, they're I, just like, but oh, see, this one to not here. cut away too much. It's like, well, we got to use the most of the stone. Here's what it's shaped like. Yeah, but but see, I agree with that, except if it weren't for the size of the stone and for them to get it right the first time. I mean, like, yeah. you know, because how do they? I mean, like, if you go by his by you know agreed upon history, the the way that they transported those stones was like on logs and ton, and like tons of people right. pulling them. And so and like, specifically, how do you get it that? accurate with specifically from that that's that's a good point to bring up because if if they're perfect cubes you can roll them easily but they're not no they're yeah they're they're odd shapes they and they all fit together but but the sheer size of them is just like because isn't that the isn't that sort of what always comes up is like there's no way for us to do even nowadays with our technology what they did back then the cranes that we have can't even pick up one block so like like and that's how we would build it and so we can't currently build most of those ancient structures yeah even even Stonehenge, because the top, a lot of those big, I don't, they're not called capstones, but a lot of the top pieces are so big that like, yeah, how they get them up? Yeah, how they get? It's like there's two stones. I, you can, you know, those are like refrigerator size, right? They're probably bigger than that, right? You get those up, but then how do you get the thing? No, on top? but they go underground too. They're like they're like twenty feet underground, so like you're just seeing like half of it, right? But see, even then, so but that's now, so that means that it was even taller before. Yeah, Sorry. and and I, I could that's see like, that that like. It's pretty well. Not a more advanced technology, but just a different technology being used. That like, it's kind of like how. Um, well, I don't know, but uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, they didn't explain how the stuff worked because you assume everybody n- knew the same technology. But but I think most of these things were from a previous time. So like even even who they say built the pyramids, I don't I don't think that's accurate. Um, I think that those people inhabited those pyramids. They didn't build them. Hmm. Only from the, he points it out too, but the weather damage around like the Sphinx, is, in order to get that weather damage, it's a lot way older than the civilization they say that built it. Right. And like they didn't build it with weather damage. No. Well, wasn't it also recarved though? Like, wasn't that sort of one of the theories with that? Like, where originally it was like a, actually a lion, like a yeah, full lion, yeah. and then, like many years later, when it was like kind of rediscovered, like somebody carved it into a person. Yeah. Like, I mean, I again, I don't know, but that's that's a story I've heard. You know, I don't know how accurate it is. Well, but what does this? What does it, any of this mean though? Like, that the humans were super advanced. I mean, that's what you want to say, right? That humans were super advanced. Well, but not even that. It's just that we. It's just that we need to do more, be more diligent as in to look into our history because, you know, the human brain has been the same. It's gonna for bum like us all 200, out. Two hundred thousand. You know, years. it's like it's like when a <laughs> when a twenty year old like gets a feature movie writer credit, and I'm like, I'm twice his age. I hate him. <laughs> And and so, but like this, if we if we discovered that these ancient civilizations were like way better than us, we're gonna be like, fuck, what are we doing? I, I don't think they were better. I just think that they knew more than we think they did. Yeah, and that and but, that and we've been knew. we've been hobbled by the by history sort of resetting or and they you know, know something that we don't know. 
Maybe. And so that, I, I think but, the benefit but, but, but to that's that. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, we're not going to rediscover that technology. So it's almost like yeah. it's jealousy, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck, I wish we knew how to build. Well, to, to me, it's like if if we acknowledge that they had a different technology, it might make us try to figure out how it works and think outside the box to just. And I think it could benefit society if we could figure out how they build things because their shit did last longer. There's yeah. structures are all over They're the place. They're still around. Yeah. And, and, and one other thing that he brings up is um, that I thought was very interesting was that he thinks that there is a underground tunnel system that connects all of South America. And, and so that it was actually tunneled out uh, by man, which is like, you know, in the same line of like building megalithic structures, is like you have a technology to dig out. Yeah. Um, having having been to Machu Picchu in Peru, I I believe that. Because wait, wait, what? It, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but I just had an epiphany. Yeah, if there were giants, couldn't they just lift these stones and 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 dig real hard? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're not actually tech savvy at all. They're, yeah, just, they're like, just like, hey, well, guy, they, it's like it's like they could smooth out the rock to fit this thing because they just kind of wipe it. They're just strong. Yeah, and they could and they could all push it on and you know, yeah, they it's like, it's like carrying a television, yeah, or moving a couch. You get it wet; yeah. it's all concrete. Yeah, I need four giants. <laughs> we came, we came along. You, and we you, were and like, you. God, we can't build those things. Let's kill all of them, <laughs> and we'll say that we did it. Right, right. Ooh, there's too many giants. They're gonna build everything. We gotta get on. Yeah, or or like you know, again, because there's all this you know speculation around the great flooding. Like everything could have been flooded, and when everything receded, and then people came up again, they went, you know, I'm gonna tell everybody that this was my idea. Yeah, yeah. Look, look what we did, everybody. Like, yeah, you know. and I, I tend to lean towards the idea that nobody's hiding a history. It's that it hasn't been found yet yeah. because a great reset happened, and and that's just all lost. Well, like you know, you could compare uh, what was it like uh, Babylon to the the Library of Alexandria? Yeah. You know, like that the Library of Alexandria burned down for some reason, but that there was a lot of information in there that's I bet it was forever the lost. Giants, the giants probably did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. I hate reading because they're like stupid, right? And they're like, <laughs> we just want to build pyramids. Yeah. You guys are like, we, I, yeah, I like rocks and you like books. <laughs> they, we they, are not the same. There is a story of a guy in Utah who found these these um, giant mummies in these in this cave system. He didn't have a camera, and I'm, I don't know the the time frame of when he did this, but he so he drew the mummies in the, the state that they were in. And so they, the, the the male was like three meters. That's like nine feet tall. And the female was just a little bit shorter, but they were covered in armor and they, and he had, he had a giant sword and there were these stone boxes around him and that there were bronze plates mm. that had language written on them that we don't know. And so Klaus brings up the fact that this language that they found these bronze plates on in Utah, they found these in other places of the world and they don't know what the language is. Mm. And you know, I mean, like, like, sure, it's why isn't that not? Uh, uh, why haven't they figured it out yet? But I'm like, well, because this this weirdo found it, and nobody believes him. That right. like they think that he's a weird, you know, like. What year was this? Why didn't he have a camera? Oh, it, was it before cameras? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long did it take for them to decipher the uh, um, Rosetta Stone? the Zodiac Killer? Oh, oh, you know, oh, like yeah. that, that whole thing. Like, did they, they even do? They that? just figured it out. I oh, thought. They did? Yeah. I yeah. read a thing, who, who but was it took it? like 40 was it years. Was a DNA right? thing recently, right? No, I somebody somebody cracked the code oh. of his like, you know, thing. It was a cop. It was a cop. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I I, don't I remember know. I just remember reading I'll they bet did it. Was it. A cop. And then yeah. Uh maybe. Yeah, cops. Sure. Always deciphering things, solving mysteries. <laughs> oh no, I meant the Zodiac killer. Oh, the Zodiac. Oh, yeah, no, me no, too. No, no, I don't think so. I think he was just some weird <laughs> A cop wouldn't be smart enough to, but but he made up a language. Up he that. made up that that whole yeah. note, and it took forty years for you know, uh, yeah. You know, but I experts could, to I figure could do it that. out. Well, that's what I'm saying though. But who knows what this guy did? This guy could have been making it up too. You know, right? That, that's my point. Is I'm actually on the other side of this, going like yeah, this guy could have just yeah. made it up. Well, you found me. You drew him. Where, where are they at? Yeah. Well, I don't know how I got there. Yeah, it's just there. I don't <laughs> but know. There's <laughs> others though. Yeah. You're saying. <laughs> Uh, well, the, the 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 language in the stone tablets or in the bronze plates, 
he says that they have found that language in other places of the world. Hmm. But this this dude, Klaus. Oh, the yeah. same. Oh, oh. So this, they found the same type of language that's undecipherable in other places of the world that yeah. could never have been connected. Oh, okay. See, I don't know. And I'm like, well, that's cool. But yeah, I'm like, that is cool. Like, if yeah. he if he were trying to show people this, like most would be like would would, yeah. That's depre- take a this, lot to be. Well, he's and he's the most down to earth one. Like, but this whole you know. thing is depressing. <laughs> Because if there was like a a human race yeah. who they ever everyone in the world was together, they all had the same language, they're making pyramids and yeah. stuff, Kumbaya, just having fun, it, yeah. and they're gone. Yeah, I mean, I doubt it was so that. What are we gonna do? I don't know. We're doomed. Yeah, they didn't. It didn't work out. No. Maybe they went to another planet. You know. Oh, okay. Like, like, well, when that's you, where when the you talk alien about thing big, uh, uh, <laughs> like big civilizations disappearing, like oh, drought. But I'm like, yeah, where'd all the bodies go? Uh, that that's the thing with a lot of civilizations; they disappear. Right. And like, I think that like, hey, there's a chance that they, you know, uh, uh, went to another dimension. However, so maybe spaceship, maybe uh, channeling uh, the sound vibrational energy. I don't know. You yeah. know, like they. Flipped into I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, but that then then here's where it gets into ancient alien stuff, where you're like, well, maybe the tech, you know, and they just did it in the uh, that uh, the new Marvel movie, uh, the the Eternals, like that. Literally, that whole movie is like ancient aliens. Oh, the, where the I comic seen book. It yet. Yeah, and, but uh, I'm not ruining it for you. I promise. But uh, the idea is, is like it's about the about superheroes that show up on Earth, like. Before yeah. mankind has any, I heard most of yeah. that movie was just them going like, we didn't get involved with Thanos because we, we didn't care. Yeah, they have, well, they have a rule not yeah. to not. It's like Star Trek where they're not supposed to like the Watchers. Yeah, they're not supposed to get involved. Right. They're only supposed to get involved for the for the sake of uh, helping humans evolve. If we fail, it's on us. But all the all the conflict that happens is part of their evolution. So they're just curating it. Or that's what it was. But but what I'm saying is is like that's another ancient alien thing. Um, and a much more, you know, the Hollywoodized version. But like, but that's where you can get there with like the Babylonian stuff where you're like, wow, how did they know this type of math and these how did they invent all of these things in this short little window? Uh, but that's where I have to go. That's where I'm like, like if this is when I become a little bit more of a wade because I'm I, I go, I go, I believe that there could have been very advanced. And when I say advanced, I just mean more advanced than caveman civilizations that right. then potentially got reset. There could have been society. Society, yes. Okay. That could have been buried. And now we're in, we, and we almost had to redo it over and over again until we got it to now. You know, we've got a question that's on topic from Chris Galliano on our Discord. What do you guys think about the possibility of hollow earth being real and early humans continuing life from within, basically creating a much more technologically future society compared to ours? Which could explain, you know, UFOs, whatever they're called now. I, I'm so into it in the same way when you watch. Um, this is a bad parallel, but it, but it, you know, it's a good it's a good starting point of Black Panther. You know, if there was a society that went into the Earth had technology, why would they give it to the idiots on top of the Earth that are like feuding with each other? It's like, well, right. they're, they're, yeah. you know, I, I think Hollow Earth is a possibility, and I say this a lot because it's like, well, um. Most of the mass of the universe is like unaccounted for. And I'm like, well, maybe planets aren't as rocky as we think. Mm-hmm. You know, the the center might not be rock. And the, the the reason why the math doesn't add up is because we've we're actually wrong about something simple. And but also in the same vein, maybe the hollow earth is you have this gravitational energy and it's actually a different dimension inside this place that you only get to because that energy is so strong. So like I'm into the idea that these two things, these two different hollow earth ideas might be possible, but I don't just go like, ah, you know, well, I mean, I do lean towards the possibility. Of <laughs> I'll meet you halfway. I, I, I believe, I, I believe, I believe that the earth is what the, what scientists say it is where it's a hot core and magma and, you know, all that. But, but based on how, excavation works i do believe that there could be hollow pockets way deep under the earth that are ancient that maybe something could have survived and that's just their universe you know and maybe maybe they are aware of what's happening on top but 
aren't, uh, but don't dabble in it because they're just like, we're safe down here. We got our whole little, we got our Starbucks. These guys fucked us yeah. 2,000 years. Or yeah, we got a Walmart, years. we got a Starbucks, we got everything we need down in Hollow <laughs> Earth and a dinosaur that I ride to work every You're day. like, you don't talk to your neighbors, right? I don't know. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> I mean, we're but, probably, we're probably evolved from the idiots who, <laughs> who like just stayed on the surface yeah. and the smart people were like, no, we're going down. And then it got politicized and people were like, I don't know. That's yeah. fake. Like we're not going to, there's no flood and stuff like that. And so right. we're just, we're just, <laughs> we're derived from like these morons and that's why we can't figure out this stuff. Okay. Well, that's bleak. Well, when you put it like topic, that, I feel like is a very bleak. If you're really but, looking at it like, oh, we suck. Like, if any of this is true, it means we suck. Okay, what about this? What about what if the Hollow Earth wasn't? How about here's another version? Because I feel like if the Hollow Earth existed the way I explained it, there'd be they'd be like weird bat people or something. Mm -hmm. What if it's like? What if there's actually uh, like deep into the ocean, there's like intelligent squids or something that are like basically a society, and they know like we go up, bad things happen. We're yeah. gonna stay down here. We're gonna filter out the microplastics and have our little Atlantis down here. Because squids are pretty smart and they yeah. we keep finding those giant ones. We keep discovering, like we've, we've, uh, you know, studied 1% of the ocean floor or something yeah, like that. Right, yeah. So like, you know, I mean, but then like, at least it's not, we're the dumb ones, <laughs> you know, like okay, we're, just, we're, just, we're yeah. just, we're just a different creature that's sort of dumber on its own track. Are. Yeah. Yeah. We're dumber than Maybe we'll figure well, it out. Well, we don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, Aquaman, you know, could be the Tarzan of the sea for all we know. And, you know, raised by raised by ape squid yes you know so maybe they're just like you know early 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 uh ape man creatures i don't know all right we got, just, we, i'm just making stuff up now <laughs> no it's fine we got a minute left do you you you, you, you muppet babies what, what do you want to plug oh no uh 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 muppet babies is uh still airing uh we have a big surprise coming for everyone who's a muppet fan oh whoa um i can't say what it is Kermit but it's, it's coming very soon yeah. <laughs> well you just ruined it oh, I, I told you not to I say that. <laughs> uh, but no if you if you are a muppet fan this is this one is for you. Nice. And so that that's coming down the pipe uh, very soon. Um, yeah. And then Night at the Museum uh, should be uh, it, it's coming out in the near future. Uh, we don't have a release date yet, like but four it's four or five years. right? Uh, no, no, no. I, I think uh, within this year. Uh, oh, we're, really? looking, we're looking soon. Yeah. So oh, it's coming along. Oh, shit. Okay. Really quick. Uh, really bad movies. Uh, TikTok, Instagram. All right. Beer buddy. Uh, remember everything. No. Fuck. Ah, shit. I blew it. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. There's more time. Uh, 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 what is it? Oh, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. Real life sci fi. Uh, pick your ass. Real life sci fi. Bye. Bye.